Do you make awesome strip board modules for your DIY synthesizer projects but are bummed about how hard and expensive it is to make great looking front panels for your sonic artwork? In this video, I'll show you how to take your front panels from looking like this to this, and it will only cost you a couple of bucks a panel. I'm Brian from Eurorack DIY, and I'm here to share with you how I make inexpensive Eurorack modules that sound and look great. Now we're at one of my favorite parts of the process of creating a module, getting the manufacturer parts back and assembling them. In this last video of my Passive Multiple series, I'll show you the boards I got back, how to assemble them, and then I'll give a quick demo of how they work in my DIY rack. If you haven't watched the other videos in this series, there's a link on your screen to them and in the description below. If you enjoy this kind of video, please like and subscribe to get notified when I make new ones. Speaking of new projects, since this is the last video in this series, leave me a comment below to let me know what you might be interested to see me take on next. While the shipping can be quite a bit quicker if you select some of the slower options, truth be told, after I've put all the work into designing a board and sending it off, I'm usually not patient enough for the extra weight. This time I opted for a more expensive option, and the boards arrived in about two weeks, and it only adds a few dollars more to the cost of each board. Even with the extra shipping, they're still cheaper than buying a comparable kit. This time my shipment arrived in a slightly larger box than usual. Opening it up, I found that each set of boards was packaged slightly different, so maybe they came off of different assembly lines? The parts themselves were nicely packed and well wrapped so they don't slide against each other and scratch or mar any surfaces. For this project, I had the front panels manufactured as well as the PC boards to electrically connect the jacks themselves. Looking at the front panels, the graphics came out nice and crisp given their small size that was necessary to fit the proportions of the module itself. The black background of the solder mask is continuous and even, and even across the whole panel, and both the white silk screen and gold plated exposed areas behind the mask look great. The holes are machined accurately to the correct size. The printed circuit boards are also manufactured perfectly and will solder up nicely. To assemble the board, all we're going to need are the two PC boards themselves, the front panel and the uh, PC board that we're going to solder the jacks to. The, we need eight of the uh, Thonk Icon jacks. I'll leave links to those below where I source them. Um, they, the boards are nice and symmetrical, so you can mount things on either side of it. I'm going to go ahead and mount the, the jacks on this side so that the silk screen shows out. Um, no particular reason, it could go either way. And then all we do first is we go ahead and place all the jacks into their, into their holes, paying attention to one side has the, the, the two connectors and one side has one. And they all line up the same direction for the first four and then they, they go the other direction for the uh, for the remaining four. It's a good idea to go ahead and pre-assemble the boards like this first so that everything remains lined up. And what that what I mean by that is we're going to go ahead and, and put everything in before soldering it, add the front panel so that we've got our nice sandwich there that we talked about earlier, and then we're going to go ahead and put on the the nuts to to secure to secure the board. And of course, we've got to keep them from rolling off the desk themselves. Just quickly screw on all eight of those. They only need to be finger tight. And the reason that we do this is that sometimes when you solder up a board or solder a component to a board, it might not end up exactly aligned the way you want it to. And then when you go to install the front panel, you're either going to have to force it into the hole that it's supposed to be in, or maybe even if, 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 it, doesn't, if it doesn't make it, if it's, if it's misaligned enough, you'll end up having to completely unsolder it and, move, and shift things around. This way, we know that everything's in the correct orientation and the holes that they're supposed to be in. Of 
course, we don't want to let the jacks come out of the PC board from behind. The, it'd be really hard to, if that fell off, it'd be rather difficult to get all the, the pins lined up again. Probably better to start over if that happened. But with that, we have everything nicely sandwiched in place and things are ready to solder. Now all that's left is to solder things up. While well, you can get uh, really nice, expensive equipment to solder with things like helping hands and things like that, sometimes just uh, inexpensive, simple solutions are nice too. I like to sometimes just use a blue tack or poster putty to hold things. It does a really good job of firmly holding things in place. So we'll go ahead and secure the board with just a little bit of that. And then, um, Go and solder. This, this too is an inexpensive soldering iron I got off of Amazon just to show that uh, you don't need like all the really expensive equipment to be able to do to be able to do uh, good assembly work uh, for your DIY stuff. And all we need to do is just come by, hit each of the uh, solder pads. With a little bit of solder. making sure we make good contact on each of them. I, um, I'll leave a link below for this particular soldering kit that I got on Amazon. It's a, it's a really nice starter kit. It was uh, $20 US. It, uh, it has a few, few things like uh, tweezers and, and, um, and just other, other sorts of things, a nice little stand that comes in. And then the nice thing is too, is as an inexpensive soldering iron, it plugs directly into the uh, the AC outlet, so it ma it makes a uh, plenty of plenty of heat, and uh, which is what you really need is you want one that uh, can heat up quickly, uh, maintain heat as you're as you're making your solder connections, and then just to make each of these connections, we touch both the pin and the the pad, feed in a little bit of solder, and just move on to the next one. Wait for the solder to flow down into the hole on each one. Make sure we make every one of the uh, connections, all 24 of them in this case. So one last thing to do before we install it in the rack is make sure that we get all the nuts nice and tight. Uh, go ahead and get a pliers. Be real careful that you don't let it let it scratch the uh, the surface by pushing it up too tight against the surface. But this also shows just a little bit about how durable things are. The, it doesn't matter that that the metal itself touches. And just real quickly go down, hit all those, get them nice and tight so that they don't loosen. So to demonstrate my multiple, I'm going to use my totally DIY Eurorack system. What I've got here is, uh, in addition to the multiple, I've got a filter that I'm using as a, an oscillator. It has resonance, so I'm using an oscillator. I've built a digital wavetable oscillator. Uh, its volt proctive is here, input is here, and its output's there. And then I have a sequencer that I've built, and its volt proctive out is here, going into the filter to make the sequence that we're hearing now. So if I want to replicate that volt per octave sequence to both of these modules, what I can do is I can take the output from the sequencer, put it to the input of the multiple, and then take one of the outputs back from that, back into the filter, acting as an oscillator, and have the sound back in for that. Now to bring that same volt per octave signal to the the wavetable oscillator, I simply go from the output of the multiple into its volt per octave input. Of course, at this point, we can't actually hear it because I don't have uh, any means. I only have one output that I'm recording to, so I can move that over here, and now we can hear the, the duplicated sequence in there. Uh, brings up an obvious uh, deficiency of my, of my Eurorack system. I don't have a mixer, and turns out a mixer is a great uh, next project to get into to introduce true electronic modules, uh, some op amps and things like that. And so I'm going to take that on next as my next series of videos. 
if you do enjoy these videos, please subscribe so you get notified of those. Uh, leave a comment uh, below letting me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover or certain kinds of projects you'd like me to talk about. And, uh, and, and as always, uh, thumbs ups are welcome too. Thank you very much for watching.